select a landing zone. doing it in Zoya Badia, the facility with all the people laid out in rows. The abandoned factory Shibani was held in. It is precisely as you guessed. Black Anna was coding languages into the vocal cord parasites. They infected the subjects with the parasites, then made an incision in the throat to expose the vocal cords. That allowed them to play recordings of a desired language directly to the parasites. And the parasites learn the languages that way. That's some teaching method. I just don't get how a bunch of bugs had the brain power for it. They don't. Do not judge them by human standards. They do not learn as a function of intellect. Then how do they do it? What language the parasites react to is coded into their genes. You could expose the Japanese strain to English for years, and it would never learn the language and react to it. The pronunciation, rhythm, and structure are different. But what about, say, Spanish and Portuguese? Linguistically, the two are very close. Yeah, they're both Iberal Romance languages. Even so, a Spanish language mating pair exposed to Portuguese will not copulate. Only when they hear Spanish. Only then. And the majority of their offspring will be the same. So it's a literal case of a mother tongue. But if that's so... He's coming too. Roger that. in the first place. Well... Among the many thousands of offspring, there may be just a few that react to Portuguese. You're talking about mutations. Correct. Playing the tapes helps to identify the mutations. You gotta extract him. Those specimens are then isolated and bred with one another. From their children, specimens that react more strongly to Portuguese can again be selected and bred. Repeating this process creates a strain that reacts solely to Portuguese and never to Spanish. Mutation and selection. No different to breeding roses. So you kept increasing the change over the generation. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Must have taken a hell of a lot of patience. More like patience. Just how many died for this? There's something I still don't get. In order to tell which larvae will react to Portuguese... He's coming too. Roger that. ...which copulate. That means you'd need tens of thousands of guinea pigs. There's no way you could do that in a facility that small. For normal selective breeding methods, you would be right. But there is a more effective selection method when training the vocal cord parasites. <sighs> Go on. It is not only when mating that the parasites listen for language. Shortly before hatching, 
Larvae display markedly increased activity in reaction to particular language. The active eggs can be identified under a black light. So the eggs that react to Portuguese are selectively placed in the throats of subjects. So you see, narrowing down strains that react to the target language is an effective process. Though I'm sure that even so, many lost their lives to create the various strains. Taken against their will into that... that dungeon. There are two reasons for playing the tapes for the past the target. One, to isolate the eggs that respond to the target language. And two, to cause the specimens raised from the selected eggs to mate. I get how the system works. But why do they respond to language before they even hatch? It's not like they can mate from inside an egg. It is because the... Okay, subject is in. Before hatching... You mentioned that what language the parasites respond to is hard-coded into their genes. And that they don't have the brain power to actually learn a language. But then you say that the larvae at Nzoya Badiabulu were learning the languages in the egg. Your story doesn't add up. Your country is home to a unique songbird. The Japanese bush warbler. Sure, what of it? What a beautiful call it has. But no bush no. warbler can sing it perfectly at the start. As chicks, they can barely chirp at all. They must learn from their parents and other adult birds. Only then can they sing properly and attract females. So naturally, there are individual differences in each bird's call. Though they start on the same footing, each bird is influenced by its teachers. And the parasites are the same? Like the birds, the parasites have a genetic predisposition towards a particular language. But while in the egg, the larvae's ears are tweaked by listening to the voice of the host. This tweaking ensures that the grown parasites will react better to the host's speech pattern. Why would they have an ability like that? Well, there are distinct regional differences within even the same language. Rare is the language that has no unique dialects. Yes. Learning the host's speech pattern before hatching attunes the larvae to whatever twist of pronunciation it will encounter. This adaptive ability is what makes them so formidable. I see. So a language requires selective breeding. The parasite... Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Of course, having the egg stage larvae listen to the tapes in the factory was not meant to teach them. It was more important to use that trait of theirs to identify the mutated strains. As I mentioned earlier... He's coming too. Roger that. Weapon. You could wipe out a neighboring ethnic group by accident. That pronunciation is too close. What you say is true. In that sense, they are imperfect as ethnic cleansers. But for his purposes, they are good enough. His objective was not to exterminate any one ethnic group, but to render the world's lingua franca, English, inert. You gotta extract him. Roger that. Extraction arrived at Mother Base.
Allied Ops list updated. Please select a landing zone. Deploying. Something I've been wondering. Why are you called code talker? During World War II, the U.S. military used the languages of different tribes, including the Navajo, as codes, right? I know the term code talker was used to mean people sent to the battlefield to speak in those codes. Were you one of them? Our mother tongue was indeed used for war. But I did not go. I was already over the conscription age. However, I was made to help craft the codes that were spoken. So in a wider sense, you could call me a code talker for that. Now, According to the intel team, the escaped kids should be around here. Locate and secure them. They must have thought it was the perfect language to use as a code. Yeah, in the end, the Japanese never cracked it. The cipher is king in information warfare. Of course, they didn't simply speak in Navajo. They created substitutions for words according to a code book, and then translated those into a language. Young Diné was sent to the front lines of the Pacific Theater as code talkers. To fight is an honor for the Diné. They were the pride of our people. But I cannot say this history brings me joy. Words are alive. When they are spoken, life is breathed into them. They become a part of the listener. Our words were transformed into lifeless ciphers and used for war. This, after the Black Anna spent generations suppressing the language. Yeah, I'm sorry. He's coming too. Roger that. Calling you code talker, huh? No, I do not mind. The reason Skullface called me Code Talker was because I also am responsible for coding language into the vocal cord parasites. I am the same as those young warriors, used for a cipher's sake. I must never forget that. The name, Code Talker, is a lesson carved into my being. You said Skullface ordered you to weaponize the vocal cord parasites. But you also said he wasn't the reason. You gotta extract him. I was seduced by the parasites. That is a fact. <laughs> How? You mean from your curiosity as a scientist? That I cannot deny. But there is more to it. The story goes back to the 19th century. To my earliest... Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. ...from the government. Visited our Hogan. Our home. I cried. Took me from my mother's arms and took me away to an Indian boarding school. From that day forward, I became George. This was the name my teacher gave me. I was He's coming too. Roger that. Forbidden from speaking anything but English. If we dared utter a word of filthy Navajo, the teacher made us eat a bar of soap. Yeah, 
That was the U.S. government's education policy for Native Americans. To erase our words was like erasing our people. Their education was tantamount to ethnic cleansing. Over time, the overt persecution of our language stopped. But to this day, it continues to be eaten away by the lingua franca, that is English. Many of the Diné outside the reservation. You gotta extract him. Just our language. Across the world, minority languages are being destroyed by dominant languages. Many are on the verge of extinction. He's coming too. Roger that. Yes. I began thinking that minority languages needed some sort of deterrent against dominant languages. In order that they, that they... Boss, about the kids. It appears there's a movement among them to organize. Yes. One person who'd be behind that. At the foundation. I'll continue to look into it. Man acquired language thanks to a type of parasite. One that distinguishes between languages as a precursor to reproduction. If I could just resurrect it, make it more pathogenic, I would have my deterrent against English. But I failed to hide that aim from subject on board. Leave the rest to us. I wanted to retaliate against the English language. Though never did I intend to actually use it as he planned. He's coming too. Roger that. I was forced to study how to make the parasites compatible with all the world's languages. All but English. However, he in fact secretly isolated... You gotta extract him. I will not be held prisoner by the man's phantom. The English strain must not be allowed to exist either. Hey! Support helicopter requested.
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Please select a mission. Unit dispatched. Unit dispatched. Please specify a project. Please specify a project. <laughs> 